years ago, that must be no, she did that on her own. Yeah, that had nothing to do with it. But uh, Christine, thank you. Which kids? Thank you very, very much. Uh, Shirley Campbell, uh, thank you uh, very much. She greeted me as I uh, as I came in and made sure that I got to uh, got to the right room. Welcome uh, to uh, the expanded uh, Pennsylvania Convention Center, one of the best convention centers in the United States of America. And this is a great industry, uh, also. Uh, to uh, our great, great uh, president of uh, ISTE, uh, Holly, Joe. Uh, job. Joe. Joe. That's what I'm Holly, thank you very, very much. Can we please recognize our great president? Please, uh, please uh, give a big, big round of applause uh, to, uh, to Shirley uh, Campbell as well. <laughs> Shirley said she would only come up if I got her a round of applause. So, uh, <laughs> uh, come on up now. Hillary Goldman, uh, and uh, Government Affairs Officer for uh, ISTE. Uh, Hillary, thank you uh, as well. Uh, I'm very excited to, uh, to be with you this afternoon. Again, I apologize for running a little late. It's uh, just uh, been one of those days, and uh, we're not even uh, nearly halfway uh, through it. Uh, but I think, as all of you know, uh, talking to you about science, technology, and math, of course, would be like talking to Michael Jordan about basketball. Um, you already know that our young people, uh, when they get that kind of training, when they get that kind of support, uh, they can actually learn and grasp uh, many, many concepts at a very, very early age that prepares them uh, for later on. When I talk to young people, uh, I try to remind them that at some point in time, you will actually get out of middle school, you'll actually get out of high school, you'll go on to college, and one day, uh, you'll be grown up, you'll be in the workplace, you'll, you know, have uh, families. Now, you know, don't rush it, uh, take, uh, take your time. Uh, middle schoolers should not really be thinking about that, but, you know, we do want them to think about uh, other things. Five years ago, uh, the Kindle did not exist. Today, Thousands and thousands and thousands of people are using that device and many, many others. Uh, I'm a Sony reader person uh, myself, but whatever it is that you use, these devices are now being used, and it's as if they've existed for a long, long period of time. Five years ago, you'd be lucky if you could find a smart interactive uh, whiteboard or pretty much a smart anything. There's a lot of smart stuff around today that literally uh, has only come into existence over the course of the last few years. Talking with young people about uh, cell phones, uh, for those of you who are old enough to remember, uh, there was first the bag, a cell phone with the battery that was about as big as this uh, podium. Uh, then there were the non-bag ones, and they were about this big, uh, larger actually than a brick, uh, but about uh, the same weight. Uh, and uh, you know, now you can just literally put them front pocket, back pocket, put them wherever you want. Uh, they're really, uh, really small, and the technology continues uh, to evolve. Again, it's always fun talking with young people about younger people about these kinds of things because they grew up in this world. This is all they know. So talking with them about, you know, records, uh, they think you're talking about something in a box that goes somewhere. No, it's, uh, there was a device <laughs> called a record player. Uh, it had different speeds, uh, and so what they know is, you know, CDs and now. Uh, MP3 players, it can carry, you know, 10,000 songs on something that's about this big. Uh, until a couple years ago, I was running around with a bag of CDs uh, in my car, thinking that I was on the cutting edge because I had a six CD player uh, in, uh, in my vehicle. That's, of course, uh, so like the 90s, um, <laughs> as, as the kids like to say. And so we know that technology is always changing, it's always evolving, it's, uh, it, it, it is dynamic. And the cutting edge today, uh, as we all know, uh, if you go through the, you know, iPad 1, iPad 2, I think 2 came out and some people were still buying 1 uh, and trying to figure out why, why in the world did I buy this thing uh, in the first place. And so uh, the only way that we will continue to be a leader, uh, if we seek to be a leader, we should be a leader is to continue to invest, uh, and invest in uh, education, invest in our young people. And so science, technology, uh, math, uh, and uh, all of the educational components. And equally important, of course, are art and music, and cultural activities. All of our art. You cannot have a well-rounded education 
uh, without all of those components. And unfortunately, we know when things get tough, they are often the first things off the table. Uh, no one, of course, rightly so, would ever think about uh, taking away uh, English class or math class or social studies uh, or uh, even science. Uh, and art and music should be in the same category have the same impact on young Libraries. people. And so uh, we are certainly big, big supporters uh, in a variety of ways here at the local level. We're not technically in charge of schools, but these are our children. These are actually my children here in the city of Philadelphia. And so we want to push hard uh, as best we can, working with the school district. Uh, and as was mentioned uh, in the intro, having the Mayor's Office of Education uh, is critically important. That's how we establish something called graduation coaches. These are adults. We're trained to work with young people to help get them through middle school into high school and on to college. Philly Goes to College is an office within the Mayor's Office of Education. It is a virtual 311 center for any piece of information that you need about going to college, whether you're 18, 38, or 81. If you want to go to college here in the city of Philadelphia, that's a one-stop shop that you can get a ton of information uh, about uh, going on uh, to school. We also try to provide uh, incentives to our young people, just little things to help keep them focused, let them know uh, that we care about them. So we have the Mayor's VIP program, which is uh, very improved performance. Uh, and we give tickets uh, to the various sporting venues, Phillies, Eagles, Sixers, Flyers, and a whole bunch of other things. Straight A students, park attendants, all of those kinds of uh, incentives, uh, again, to young people, just you know, kind of go out and have some fun. We participated in a program uh, with the Urban Affairs Coalition called the Freedom Rings Partnership. We have 77 computer labs uh, that will be established all over the city of Philadelphia. Some in our rec centers, some in homeless centers, some in shelters, some uh, in uh, other facilities all around the city. Unfortunately, 44%, 44% of Philadelphians do not have access to the internet. 44%. You imagine trying to do homework, trying to fill out a job application. You know, most places you actually fill out an application online. I mean, the notion of you know you get a document or a piece of paper. I mean, that has virtually uh, gone away. Uh, and to get other information that people need uh, in order to progress, uh, if not to survive. And so it really is about uh, 21st century skills. And you know, schools in 2015 cannot look the same as they did in 1915. It just won't work. Uh, and so we've started to try to remove from our language here in Philadelphia uh, the idea of K to 12. K to 12 is not going to do anything for you in the 21st century. It's a K to 16 experience. And so I love talking to eighth graders who are graduating when I tell them that, you know, eight down, eight to go. And that, you know, you hear all the groans uh, from, from the audience. So you're halfway there. Uh, and, uh, you know, you still have much more to do. All of this is happening at the same time uh, as, of course, we're in the aftermath of the worst recession since the Great Depression. And so uh, we've uh, labeled this in many instances, and I've talked about this as the Great Recession. Unfortunately, we now see something that I've also named the Great Retreat going on in education. Where else, not just in Philadelphia, not just in Pennsylvania, but all across the United States of America, in the aftermath of the worst recession since the Great Depression, with high unemployment rates, with Americans out of work and trying to change uh, into other fields in the workplace, why in the world are so many states across the United States of America cutting funding to post-secondary education and secondary school systems? That is possibly the dumbest thing that could ever happen. <laughs> and so we've had a, a great fight and a great battle over the course of the past uh, couple weeks. Uh, the school district here locally facing a $629 million deficit caused by a variety of factors, our funding going away, cuts from the state, uh, and increasing internal costs, pensions and health care costs and the like. Uh, we started on a journey to try to raise uh, some additional local funds as the Commonwealth literally somewhere in the course, we think, the next day or so, uh, will make decisions about funding for education all across Pennsylvania. But I thought it was important. You can't ask someone for something if you're not putting additional skin in the game yourselves. So we started on a journey, tried to raise some additional funding. Of course, this is Philadelphia, so we had to have a big fight about it. Uh, but when all is said and done, an additional $53 million generated here locally uh, for public education in Philadelphia. Because I think that full day kindergarten is important. I think that safe transportation is important. I think that having smaller class sizes is important. And accelerated schools for young people.
people who have either aged out or dropped out of school, and we want them to come back. And having a, a, a special uh, educational environment for them is critical to their future. This is not the time to retreat from funding education. This is the time to invest. This is that critical moment where investing in education. The president talked about a moonshot a little while ago, President Obama. But when you think about another president, President Kennedy suggested, more than suggested, that by the end of the 60s, the United States of America should be able to send a man to the moon and return him safely. And I'm sure in this, if President Kennedy were alive today, he would say a person, it could be man or woman. We didn't have a space program when he made that announcement. We did not have a space program when he made that announcement. What we had was visionary leadership. What we had was will. What we had was putting some dollars on the table and we continued to invest and invest and invest. And it's an old story, but I love this story. President was, President Kennedy was at, I don't know whether it was called Cape Canaveral at that time, but he was at the space location. He was taking a tour. And he ran into a man who was working. And he asked the gentleman his name and he told him, and he said, what do you do? What, what do you do here? And he said, I'm working to put a man on the moon. He was a maintenance worker. He was a maintenance worker. But everyone was focused. And everyone understood what the goal was. And this was a national effort. And so our effort today should be that all across the United States of America, we should have an 80 plus percent, if not a 90 plus percent graduation rate from high school. That more than half of the Americans in this country should have a college degree. That every American should be able to go to college if he or she wants to. And the only thing that's stopping us from doing that is setting a bold goal, putting the funding aside, and then uniting as Americans to make that happen. We've done it before. We can do it again. And if we expect to be, continue to be the world leaders that we are, the only way that that will happen is when we invest in our young people, when young people understand the importance of science and technology, and math, and their own education. Because when we invest in young people, we're investing in ourselves. We invest in our own future. We are the greatest country in the world. We just need to start acting like it. Thank you very much.